Hey everyone, welcome to AppleDiaries.com. I'm Mariah. Welcome to my Heal Thyself channel where I discuss health, detoxification, and how to heal thyself. Today I wanted to discuss a topic that's been on everybody's minds um, since the passing of Robert Lockhart. I wrote a post uh, regarding this situation. I wanted to help put things into perspective and to squash a lot of the assumptions and presumptions and the rudeness that's going around surrounding this, you know, great man's life and death, okay? So none of us were there. None of us truly know what happened aside from what we were told from the family and a few friends um, that had seen him prior to his death. So. I'll just dive right in and I'm reading from my computer here. So the natural health community recently lost an amazing man at the age of 75. There are individuals using his death to prove their point without any respect or true insight into the matter. Let's show some respect. This man was a pioneer experimenting on his own body living the raw food lifestyle for over 40 years and he was a chiropractor for 45 years he helped people first of all let's not blame his raw food diet for his health issues that is ludicrous seriously if his raw foods were so detrimental to his health he would have suffered complications to his health during those 40 years from what I know, he lived with great energy and vitality, even as his family confirms this. So what caused his death? We have some facts, yet we do not have all the facts. We don't. For those who were friends with him, his family's explanation is written on his Facebook wall for anyone to go and read. What we do know for certain is that in the last 10 years, Robert was moving away from water consumption in his diet and obtaining all his hydration from mostly fruits and raw foods. In the last five years, he's done several periods of dry fasting, which dry fasting means no food, no water. For some um, that get into the extreme dry fasting, I'm not sure if he was into the extreme dry fasting or not, but. For some, this also means no contact with water whatsoever. So they won't shower, they won't bathe. I don't even think they'll brush their teeth at that time. Anyways, they're fasting. It's not like they're eating. So <laughs> what's the point? Um, so in the last five years, he's done several periods of dry fasting, which is 40, about 48 hours. So that's about two days without any food, without any water. So let's just take this as our first lesson. I mean, it's a lesson that most of us are aware of. Water is important. It's, it's vital for flushing toxins and mucus and viral loads from the body, especially when you're sick or when you're eliminating because the body needs to carry those toxins out. Now, we know that he was incorporating intermittent fasting into his routine daily with a five-hour eating window each day and for an undetermined amount of time. The doctors believe, and I, I believe they made this statement, that they think that the intermittent fasting was the cause for his kidney damage when he was admitted to the hospital and tested. This is speculation. It's pure speculation on the doctor's part because this is not a fact. It's a point to consider. I mean, I'm not saying not to consider their point. I'm just saying that it's speculation that it was his intermittent fasting that caused any damage to his kidneys. They don't know when the damage was done to his kidneys. It could have occurred in the last, you know, uh, month prior to, you know. So it's tough to say because doctors don't have a lot of experience, if any, with people who intermittent fast. Um, a five hour eating window, in my opinion, isn't that extreme. That means you could be finished dinner, say around six o'clock each day, 
and uh, maybe begin eating around 12 or 1 until 6 o'clock each day. I mean, I myself do that and I feel great. I, you know, I have no complaints in that department, although I haven't been at this for 40 years, mind you, and I do take that into account. I've been intermittent fasting for about six years now, so. But really, for the doctors to say that the intermittent fasting was the cause of the kidney damage when there are so many other factors there, I just, I mean, because we all know that, you know, any sort of digestive rest is beneficial as long as it's not too extreme and it's done under the correct circumstances, right? We don't want to be intermittent fasting if we're eating a lot of junk and, and not drinking water where we need to carry that out of our bodies. Anyways, it's a whole other thing. So I just said, let's take this as our first lesson. Water is important. It is, it is vital for flushing toxins and mucus and viral loads from the body, especially when you're sick or eliminating. Now we know that he was incorporating intermittent fasting into his daily routine of about a five hour eating window. And uh, so, like I said, the doctors believe that that was the cause of the kidney damage. This is speculation, uh, but something to consider. Robert was put through scans and tests at the hospital, which apparently revealed scarring and atrophy to his atrophy to his kidneys. I would like to note that Robert spent 2.5 weeks in the hospital before passing. Here are some of the facts. Robert was suffering with some type of chest infection from a bacteria called meliodosis, apparently found in the soil of tropical climates. Robert loved to plant rare fruits and vegetation and he spent much time tending to the plants and touching the soil. The bacterium apparently contributed to a bad cough. A gentleman uh, messaged me, private messaged me and confirmed this. He actually um, he stated that he saw Rob a few weeks prior to this incident and he seemed to be in good health aside from a bit of coughing. Uh, Rob, Robert decided to do a 72 hour dry fast at that point or around this time which I believe greatly contributed to this unfortunate situation. When the body has a viral load or toxins to eliminate as I stated above, water is vital to help flush them from the body because we know during a fast even toxins are loosened especially in a dry fast um, it's it's double time right toxins and and uh, and debris and you know loads in the body are lo loosened mucus in the body and stuff and brought into circulation for elimination and water will aid to help flush those toxins from the body um, it was mentioned that Rob admitted that the 72-hour dry fast was taking things a little too far at that point. So the infection that Rob suffered with was later diagnosed at the hospital as pneumonia. So this is a bit of a gray area. Um, Rob did not want to go to the hospital, but he did agree to go um, after, at his family's request. It was stated that uh, he was on the verge of kidney failure and a cardiac arrest at his home. Rob accepted the testing and the treatment in the hospital. I need to note here though, we do not know what type of treatments or medications was administered to Rob when he was admitted. We don't know. And this is a gray area that we'll probably never truly know. And if we did, it would surely be a vital piece of this puzzle. On a side note, Dr. Morris mentions often that people generally die not from pneumonia itself, but from the treatment of it. He spent a lot of time in emergency rooms and around hospitals, and he does not make this statement lightly, and that's why I added it in here. This is not for me to say. I'm just taking it all in and attempting to learn something. Um, from this unfortunate situation. All I do know is that we lost a good man who appeared to live in good health and vitality on raw foods for over 40 years and was experimenting with dry fasting. Dry fasting is not recommended and can be dangerous for those who are not properly prepared. And hardly anyone is, really. You have to reach interstitial hydration and, you know, why, why play, why bother, really? Like, 
that's the way I feel anyways. I've done a 24 hour dry fast um, a few times and during a couple of them, dur if I felt like water, I drank a little. So, you know, then it didn't turn into a dry fast. So really technically I've probably only done one full 24 hour dry fast, but it was comfortable for me and I would never go beyond that because I'm not into pushing the limits. I'm just into being having a rational approach and view about things. So I believe that water is vital in the fasting process and there are lessons to be learned here. We can speculate all we want, yet we will never know the whole truth. This is a fact. Let's just learn from this incident and honor a great man who shared a lot of health promoting information. To all those who have been so rude and disrespectful during this time, I won't name any names, but you know who you are. I have to say you have a lot of work to do on yourself. To use a man's unfortunate death to prove your points and opinions is beyond disgusting and disrespectful. There are so many unanswered variables and I have my own thoughts, yet I'm not going to advertise them like I know something because none of us truly do. Please, to all those who are healing themselves or attempting to gather the correct information in order to live healthy lifestyles, know this. Extremes are not the answer. This is precisely why Arnold Errett titled his book Rational Fasting. It's not about the duration of the fast. It's not about how long you can go so much as how we conduct the fast, what we break it with, and how prepared we are before the fast. All this comes into account. We must be rational in our decisions and our actions. Dry fasting does not allow the body to effectively flush toxins which is where I feel Rob may have underestimated the severity of his bacter bacterial viral load. Water is vital if nothing else is on the table, truly. Let's be rational and real in our practices and decisions. Slow and steady wins, wins the race. I per personally spent two solid years on a mucusless diet, a transition diet, first before when I first eliminated the most toxic foods like the meat, the dairy, and the eggs. And so I spent two solid years on this transition diet before I even considered going into a really high fruit diet. I always knew I would to cleanse and to detoxify, but I also always knew that it had to be done in proper steps because I had read Arnold Errett's work inside and out and studied various other works of uh, Tilden and, and other people. Anyways. Um, so transition is so important. There are times to cleanse and there are times to rebuild and remaining on a, in a deep cleansing state for some individuals for long periods of time is not always advisable, especially if you are suffering. There is no shame, no harm in taking a step back and then revisiting later on, right? Some people can live solely on fruits and, and, feel, and it feels natural, right? But for those that it doesn't feel natural to, don't push yourself baby steps, okay? This is why I advocate a transition diet because these foods can be used before detoxification, after detoxification, or during when you need to take a step back. So to state, I mean, I see meat eaters using this information, this unfortunate scenario that's just occurred with Robert Lockhart to their advantage to state that fruits and raw foods are unhealthy. This has nothing to do with the cause of his death, in my opinion. I think it has everything to do with the treatment, the bacterial infection he contracted that was later labeled as pneumonia. Anyways, so let's just stay on course here. So fruits and raw foods are not unhealthy. And I'll just state for the record here, I'm not on an entirely raw food diet myself, so it's not something that I'm promoting as gospel. I mean, I do know that raw foods and fruits are like the top of the food chain and very health promoting, but at the same time, I still eat some steamed vegetables and things like that when I'm not in the detoxification cleansing times. There's no shame in that, okay? And these people who are raw food dogmatics, I'm sorry to say, but... Just because it's raw, you know, raw isn't always law. There are many factors that come into play, and Eret speaks about that as well, why steamed vegetables and some cooked foods can help carry toxins and, and add weight and, and sweep the intestinal tract. 
Anyways, I'm getting off topic once again. So, people die daily from heart disease and other horrific diseases brought on by meat and animal product eating. Yet nobody bats an eye because it's common and accepted and because disease builds so slowly that there's always plausible deniability to contend with. One more thing, if you're experimenting on yourself, such as dry fasting for long periods, please do not advertise it to others, you know, as they may decide to give it a try. And no two humans are dealing with the exact same inner terrain or conditions of the body. One may survive the long dry fast, while the other doesn't, depending on many factors. So let's just stick with what we know and approach things with rationality, okay? So I just want to say rest in peace, Robert Lockhart. I wish you and your family all the best. And to the rest of you, please do not give up on healing and becoming the best versions of yourself. Happy healing, everyone.